Hey y'all, it's Jess. Welcome to Roots and Refuge Farm. Um, I was going to shoot a video today about seed starting and I'll get to that later on this week, but I, I've had something on my mind and I just kind of wanted to kind of explain something because I, I think there's a lot of misconception about it in the home gardening world. Um, and I want to talk to you today about the difference between um, heirlooms, hybrids and GMOs as it pertains to home gardening. You know, one thing that I have been told repetitively since starting my YouTube channel um, is people will say, oh, I just love how you explain gardening stuff. You make it so simple. You dumb it down where I can understand it. And I got to tell you, I am not dumbing anything down. I am telling you how I understand it. And so if that's dumbed down, it is what it is. Um, the truth of the matter is that I'm a regular home gardener. Um, I shared once and said this is the potting soil that I like to use. You know I got a long email about the dangers of some soils without doing extensive lab testing and all of this stuff that I'm, I'm gonna assume that that came from a place of wanting to help but unfortunately what happens a lot of times when you get into something like gardening is you run into people who have a lot of intellect and I am not downing those people. I think they're awesome. I'm glad that there are people who have a lot of intellect to figure things out. However, I think that we have to acknowledge the fact that our food system and our country um, and our culture just, it's very broken. And unfortunately, you know, I think I've read before that it takes two generations for a skill to be lost. Like if it's not being handed down from generation to generation. And that is absolutely devastating to me when you look at the fact that just 100 years ago kitchen gardens were a completely normal and completely necessary thing really in like the 20s and 30s and then really more into like the 40s and 50s food started being shipped and and the entire industry changed in a massive way and there were a lot of other factors there were factors um like wars just everything that happened over the last 100 years has led us to a generation that honestly doesn't know how to grow food and that is that's not okay that is not okay you don't have to be a survivalist or you know an off-gridder or any of that stuff to say that's not okay and you also don't have to be like super intellectual to say that's not okay i can't tell you how many times i've walked my peers you know i'm 33 years old i've walked my peers through my garden and they go oh my gosh i didn't know tomato plants had flowers and they're being dead serious that maybe they learned it in a brief unit in the eighth grade and then moved on you know what i mean like why would they have retained that knowledge it's not part of uh, the necessity of their every day. I think that's an issue. I have a problem with that um, And I'm not gonna be condescending about it and say how could you not know that instead? I'm gonna say yeah and explain what I find to be incredibly fascinating The reason why I think it's really important to make videos just simply explaining something to the best of my knowledge Which I'll be honest is not wildly ex extensive. I mean, I'm a normal person that goes in and yeah I buy the bagged soil that I like I think it's better than some of the other soils, but no, I have not lab tested it. I'm doing the best that I can, and I want to encourage other people to do the best that they can, because I think a lot of times we can allow ourselves to become crippled by um, impossible standards, and then so we do nothing. And when we do nothing, that allows for really, you know, honestly greedy corporations for broken systems to run rampant rather than if we would just encourage people to just do something and and empower people and I am a firm believer that just a small like remnant of people a small amount of people who are passionate that don't mind being imperfect but that are passionate about doing something I think that that can absolutely change a culture and I think our food culture is one that absolutely needs to be changed if you have a desire to grow your own food and it feels intimidating to you I think confront that like figure out where that intimidation is coming from because if you've if you've encountered people who have acted you know like you didn't have enough knowledge to do that that's that's baloney like you can absolutely grow food you learn so much with every single attempt every single year you learn so so much uh, by just practically getting your hands in it all of that said um, today I just want to talk to you about what the difference between heirlooms hybrids and GMOs are because there is a just a lot of misunderstanding. 
Now, this is gonna come into play a lot right now if you are like shopping for seeds, but if even if you're not starting seeds, uh, this matters because if you are a gardener that buys plants, um, and if you are just aware of the problem and you wanna figure out where do I even start, th this matters. So let's start with heirlooms because they've been around the longest. Now an heirloom can be like, any kind of plant. Heirloom does not denote like a tomato and um, there are heirloom tomatoes but there are also heirloom broccoli seeds or whatever. It can be any type of thing. I've gone into restaurants before and they've been like you know I've seen a sign that said pizza with heirlooms and they were referring to the tomatoes and just calling them heirlooms. But an heirloom is basically a cultivar, a type of a plant that has been around for a long time. Now there is some you know argument, some people say a variety needs to have been around for 100 years or 75 or 50. Uh, some people like to give it a little bit more grace than that and just say that they've been around for at least, you know, they've been handed down from one generation to the next. Now we'll use tomatoes as an example, um, but this is across the board. An heirloom can be any type of plant that's been handed down. For years. Um, basically, plants breed. Plants can cross with one another and um, an heirloom is essentially a pure plant. Like if you had a German Shepherd and you bred it to a German Shepherd, you would have German Shepherd puppies. But if you bred your German Shepherd to a Labrador, um, those puppies would not be pure. You've got an heirloom variety. If you've kept it pure, you made sure it didn't cross pollinate with anything else. You've got heirloom seeds. And essentially, heirloom seeds are just varieties that have just been handed down. They've stayed the same. Um, you can expect if you get brandy wine seeds from a reliable source where you know they haven't been cross pollinated, you can plant those and you can expect to get the same kind of tomato year after year after year. My granddaddy loved brandy wines and I remember remember being a little girl and eating brandywine tomatoes at his house and I can grow a brandywine tomato in my my garden and get it and it's so similar um, and of course there are going to be a little bit of variations just like with the German Shepherds you might have some that have longer hair or shorter hair but for the most part it's the same. Now what happened to heirlooms that it used to be that's just what all seeds were for the most part people called them heirlooms you know you had old Jed down the street that had been growing the same orange tomato for ever and he gave some of his orange toma tomato seeds to Miss Martha next door and she then grew orange tomatoes but then it crossed with one of hers and she ended up with you know a smaller orange tomato with red streaks and so then you had Miss Martha's streaky little tomato that she grew for another few decades and she gave them to her son and then he grew mama's streaky red tomato that's how heirlooms came to be that's how they got all these names people just grew them in their garden they saved the seeds and that's that's just that that is what it is the reason why we have so many varieties is because cross-pollination essentially um, that's how new varieties are made whenever you have a new variety of tomato it's a hybrid it just is that's what it's called is a hybrid. Now a lot of people have in their mind that hybrids are sterile or that hybrids are bad or you know that you don't want to grow hybrids and and that's where I hear a lot of misconception that I really wanted to speak to in this video. Hybrids in and of themselves are not bad. Um, you know they're no more bad than a than a German Shepherd Labrador dog you know in a lot of cases just like with animals you get kind of a hybrid vigor whenever you cross two plants with the others because in pure breeding where you keep these heirloom seeds going issues can kind of become pronounced um, it, however whenever you cross a couple of plants you get this vigor um, a lot of times they are disease resistant they are crack resistant they may produce more they may last longer whatever the issue is whatever it is you're breeding for those are the traits you get now the issue with hybrids is is there are two main things see back whenever um, people used to have all of their gardens they ate in season um, there was no shipping food so whenever tomatoes weren't growing you didn't eat them unless you canned them in which case you ate canned tomatoes not fresh tomatoes now I walked into Walmart the other day and they had tomatoes for 98 cents a pound right there by the front of the door um, you know along with avocados and limes and onions I'm sure encouraging people to make guacamole for their Super Bowl party or whatever I don't know those tomatoes do not grow anywhere around here 40 degrees outside there's no way those could have grown anywhere they're probably shipped from maybe South America when people started to um, ship food and and 
people as a culture began to have appetites for things that they couldn't get in season and the demand grew for that shipped food. What happens is that, you know, these commercial places like Heinz, you know, you can actually get heirloom tomato seeds now that were created by the Heinz company back like in the 50s. They're old enough now to be considered an heirloom, but at the time they were a hybrid that was created for making soup and ketchup and for uh, shipping. See, whenever the demand for all of these things rose, um, you couldn't just go pick the big slicers out of the garden and then ship them to the factory to make the products. Um, they, they weren't any good by the time they got there or you know, by the time they got to the store to be sold fresh, they weren't any good. If you've ever grown big heirloom tomatoes, you know that a lot of times the stuff you grow, these, these older varieties that you grow, they don't last very long after you've picked them. You gotta eat those things fresh to really get the prime of them. So what happened is companies began breeding plants um, in order to withstand shipping. And so we went from having old Jed's tomato and, and Mama's streaky tomato or whatever um, to having the, the Heinz tomato, the, the little red one, or the Roma, or the, the basic slicer, whatever it was that withstood the demand of, of shipping and growing in large capacities that was the strongest, those are the tomatoes that survived. And those are the, the plants that stayed available. Now the home gardeners and the seed collectors all throughout that time, they're still swapping their heirlooms. But the hybrids with the growth of, of essentially the, the greed and the demand of, of a country that wanted to eat things out of season, those things grew to be the top and the most popular. And so now what we have come to know as hybrids is we've heard that's bad. Um, because a lot of times the hybrids that you get that are the strongest, that last the longest, uh, they don't taste very good because that was able to be on the bottom of the list because keep in mind, a lot of these things are grown to add high fructose corn syrup to, um, to add a lot of preservatives to, to add flavors to. They basically said, well, get me the tomato in, in a way that I can use it and I'll just add the flavor. So it doesn't matter if it doesn't have the flavor at the cost of being able to be shipped halfway across the world. So now, a lot of people it go back to heirlooms because they want to taste what food actually meant, was meant to taste like. If you've ever had fresh grown heirloom vegetables, the flavor is just a completely different thing. A lot of the stuff that you're eating in the stores has been grown with, you know, chemical fertilizers and a lot of different factors and they're hybrid varieties and they've been shipped, they've been picked unripe. And so you're eating all this food that not only doesn't taste very good, it doesn't really have the nutritional value that it's heirloom or homegrown counterpart could have. And the other thing with hybrids, and the misconception is that they're sterile and that you can't save the seeds. Hybrids, um, like F1 hybrids, they're not stable. Like I said, if I cross the Brandywine to the Goldie, um, I would get something, you know, I mean, I don't know exactly what it would be like, put it together, you would get something that has similar traits to both of those. Just like, you know, whenever you have a kid with somebody, it looks a little bit like you and a little bit like them. So it's a similar thing. It's got the genetics of both parent plants. The thing is, is that if you save the seeds out of that Goldie Brandywine mix and you plant those seeds, you're not gonna get an identical plant to that mix because it's not stabilized. It's a first generation. It takes several generations to stabilize a hybrid. I don't know exactly what it is. I think it's something like eight to 10. Uh, maybe somebody can comment down below that knows more about that and, and say exactly what it is. But it takes several generations for that hybrid to no longer be considered a hybrid. At that point, it becomes a stabilized hybrid. And at that point, it's called open pollinated. Now all heirlooms are open pollinated, which means if you cross them to themselves, you know, if you have that plant isolated where it's not gonna cross pollinate with another, you're going to get the heirloom seeds. They're going to breed true. And with a hybrid, once it's stabilized after many generations of being bred for the characteristics that you're looking for, it becomes an open pollinated variety, which means you can plant it, isolate it, save the seeds, and it breeds true. At that point, it's just a new variety, and in 50 years, it'll be called an heirloom. Now, the misconception of, of that is that people shy away from anything that's called a hybrid because there's all of this talk about GMOs. 
and um, people get those two confused, like hybrids or sterile. Now, GMOs are sterile. Um, and the thing with GMOs is that you really need to know as a home gardener is you're not gonna get GMO seeds. And I know a lot of companies advertise no GMO seeds sold here. Well, it's illegal to sell GMO seeds to a home gardener, so they're not selling GMO seeds. Like, that's like when you buy orange juice and it says gluten-free on it. They're not selling those, <laughs> they're not allowed. GMO seeds are sold commercially. Um, like whenever, if you ever drive through, you know, Iowa or any of these, these states that do just massive commercial farming. Soy and corn, typically. And those are largely GMO crops. A massive amount of the agriculture in our country is GMO crops. And it's typically soy and corn. And the issue with that is, is that ends up in everything. Um, when you read your labels, there are a lot of things that pop up. Um, ingredients that don't even say corn or soy on them. But they're just byproducts from those GMO crops. You don't fight GMOs in a home garden. You fight GMOs in a grocery store. Your choices and what you choose to support with your dollar and the checkout aisle is really how you take a stand against the corruption that is happening with GMO crops. Um, the thing that you need to know about home gardening if you're really trying to stay away from supporting anything that has to do with these big companies um, that are really pushing the GMO movement is look at who owns the companies that you're purchasing your seeds and your plants from. A lot of the larger companies are unfortunately owned um, either by the same people that are selling GMO seeds or they're kind of in bed with them. Um, there are a lot of big brands in home gardening that um, that are definitely involved. So that's one of those things that it's not so simple as saying, oh, let me find a company that's not selling GMO seeds because you can, you can go in the store and buy heirloom seeds that are sold by a company that on you know the higher ends and the corporate ends are really involved with some yucky stuff. So I would just implore you to do some research if you are really feeling passionately about taking a stand against GMOs and just any of any of that corruption, grow your own food and, and look at who you buy your stuff from. That's really just the bottom line. That's still kind of a lot. I try to like simplify it. It's still kind of a lot. I hope that helps you. I hope that helps maybe bring some clarity to um, any confusion that you may have had. And, and what I really want to just implore you more than anything else is just do the very best you can with what you have um, and just do something. I mean, just grow some food, whatever that looks like. You know, if you're in town and you're dreaming of being able to be in a different piece of property where you have more space or whatever, what can you do where you are? I missed out so much um, in my life waiting for the right circumstances. And now I do, I have an absolutely beautiful garden. I have absolutely no complaints and no excuses at this point. I can grow as much food as I can motivate myself to do the work to grow. But there was a point in my life where I could have done a lot more and I read about all this stuff and I became really fearful about it. Honestly, I became crippled by the fear that I was going to do it wrong. If you have a choice of where you're going to put your money, uh, understand that your money is a vote. Like your money actually uh, supports things and whether you realize it or not, a lot of people support things they don't actually believe in just because they're in ignorance and they don't know any better. So that's why we have to have these conversations. That's why we have to say, okay, this is good, this is good, this is not good, because I think when everything gets, gets cloudy, people don't have what they need to actually make educated decisions. So that's what, that's what I wanted to do. I just wanted to share with you today as you're going about uh, planning your garden for 2019, as you're planning what you're going to do, I wanted you to have just this little bit of information so that you weren't confused or certainly so that you weren't afraid to do the wrong thing or anything like that. Thank you guys so much for watching. I bless you. Until next time.